I studied nuclear science, and I loved my classes, but I had this one crazy teacher who wore dark glasses. Things are going great, and they're only getting better. Casey Jones is going to reach for his goal. Casey Jones, but we'll all be dead. Well, I say every day, I'm just getting closer to taking a bath with my fucking toaster. Lorenzo will give you the details. A few moments later. What are the humans doing? Yeah, yeah, Trump the Don. The fake stream. The fake stream media keep lying on my name The billionth time that they keep throwing shade They need a scapegoat just to keep shifting blame I guess that they have a new world order to maintain Russia, Russia, Russia Fake news, I don't trust you The mainstream media is suckers They said the laptop was disinformation Then retracted this statement, but Joe was in the basement I didn't say the KKK was good on both sides That was out of context, the fake news went in line Chan 6 told everyone to protest peacefully You can check the tweets for me, I got the receipts for me Didn't say that anyone should go and drink bleach I said, never mind, sheep will still continue just believing it They said I made fun of a reporter who's disabled Just another fairy tale lie, what a fable The media really loves me, they just pretend to hate me They said that I called my wife Melania Mercedes Mercedes is the founder of the thing that I was speaking at The media lied because they knew to be believing that They said I overfed koi fish in Japan Must have been a slow week for fake news yet again I think that the left is just jealous of my tan Though for me I know the difference between a woman and a man It's gonna be a bloodbath, bloodbath Everyone is so obsessed, obsessed Biden is Obama's puppet in disguise All he really needs is some fake glasses and a mustache It's gonna be a bloodbath Bloodbath, everyone is so obsessed, obsessed. Biden is Obama's puppet in disguise. All he really needs is some fake glasses and a mustache. What's up? Thank you for watching that brand new music video. Make sure you grab. <laughs> Welcome to Chilling with Sasquatch, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, we're going to do whatever Binky tells us to. Hey, Binky, how you doing? Where's my mouse? Hey, Binky, how you doing? How you doing? Chilling like a villain, you know, cheating, robbing, robbing, stealing. I'm putting her in my pocket. Um, in my pockets. You want to see my pockets? Um, what's up? What's happening? We're shaking with you. Not much. Chilling like a villain. Oh, that's how you. That's how we do it around here. You know, we're good, Gavin. That's good. You know, uh, I spent an awful lot of time on um, Red Dead Redemption Two, looking around for Gavin, just on the off chance that he might have actually been there somewhere. But I am pretty sure there is no Gavin in that game. Gavin, have you seen my friend Gavin? Yeah. If you haven't played that game, <laughs> you wouldn't understand. What's up, Bryce? Welcome in, bud. Good to see you, Gary Baxter. And Voynich come through and said he was mentioning me because he's hot for my rock. Listen, what? I don't know. <laughs> Could be. You're gonna have to say that one. I'm not. I'm not failing. Not this time. Susan Prime single mom. Oh right, you do. <laughs> You did it a good thing. That's what you did. All right. So what we're going through tonight, believe it or not, there was a gentleman who recently was arrested, convicted, pled guilty to attempting to breed giant hybrid sheep. I not know. A, I just read this article. Not a joke. <laughs> this isn't a creepypasta. We're talking about an actual legitimate attempt <laughs> of nefariousness. Welcome once again to Leto's Law. Anybody familiar with Leto's Law? This no. isn't Leto from uh, the Dune Saga. This is a totally different guy. I don't know what he's <laughs> Welcome in, Rats to the Moon and Stephanie. Man faces prison for illegal scheme. To create giant hybrid sheep. Dun, dun, dun. I think we're living in the onion universe. <laughs> we are living a live script of the Babylon Bee. What's <laughs> up, <Some> rat <laughs> to the moon? Hell yeah. Let's take the brats. Damn mm -hmm. right. Participation trophy. We're just going to ahead and start that one right on off right there because <laughs> I can get down and put some rats on the moon. I mean, why not? We got a uh, Stephanie Jinx. Good to see ya. Um, but um, but um, bum, bum. here's my question 
Why not giant hybrid sheep? Is my question. Why, why is it illegal? Uh, why is it? I don't know. I mean, he's got a private farm of something like five thousand acres over there. Buys one all by buys onesie. As I understand it, he was wanting to breed them for hunting purposes on his private reserve over there. A uh, huge ass ranch of some absurd dimensions. So, where is is it? Just because he was bringing in what endangered sheep, maybe? What do maybe. you think? Possibly. Would that be more against the law than just monkeying with Mother Nature in general? Because the government's not doing it. Yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> Chances are he'll spend about three weeks in jail and they'll show up with some of those black sunglasses and get him out and let him go finish his freaking job. But for the government. Right. That sounds about right. All right. So Mr. Lado is going to run this through. And like I said, this isn't the God King Lado. Don't, not to be mistaken with the Dune Saga. This is just some random lawyer on YouTube. Here's Steve Lato. A longtime viewer of my channel who calls himself Madcap sent me a note and said, Steve, check this out. This might be the weirdest story that you've seen in quite some time, and I agree. Here we go. This is from the government's own Justice Department. Montana man pleads guilty to federal wildlife trafficking charges as part of years-long effort to create a giant hybrid sheep for captive hunting. <laughs> okay, so obviously not Bond villain level, but um, definitely villain level. I mean, <laughs> we got some low tier villain vibes going on. Don't you agree? I do agree. Is it evil though? I mean, are we talking like nefariousness or is he just wanting a bigger rack? No, I think there's probably nefariousness. I'm not sure. I, I'm not. I don't know. I, I guess we should go into the laws of intended, unintended consequences on this one and say that he should not be breeding giant hybrid sheep. Although I'm not sure exactly why. I feel like there's a small possibility that these things get loose and reproduce in the wild, but I figure it's more likely that they escape and basically break down into their own genetic pockets, you know, because they're hybrid. They're probably not going to be genetically viable as far as reproduction. So in that case, the, impact would be minimal if a couple got loose they'd just go out breed locally and, and not produce offspring nothing would happen if it was just a couple no 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 it would take a herd to stop a wild sheep population from reproducing uh because there would be viable native native sheeps out there that would be capable of reproduction you would have to re release generation on generation on generation in order to impact local sheep uh genetics or perhaps you might have to affect their perception of uh desirable mates so if you had a sheep like say bighorn sheep, like the big rams from the rockies right their females look for sheep with larger horns. It's, it's partly a visual cue that causes them to go into estrus. Uh, so if we were, say, crossbreeding some, you know, huge bighorn sheep, then it could feasibly have an effect, a single male having a harem of females and none of them being capable of reproducing offspring because the single male is inviolable. That could affect populations. In a single generation, no less. Welcome in, Northwoods. Good to see you. You're going to have to say that one. I'm not taking that risk. Resmir. There you go. You got Ricardo. <laughs> I'm waiting for a Conquistador to come back in. I miss him. <laughs> I, I giggle every time I see that name. <laughs> woo woo, Northwoods. Good to see you. Right. Hey, Scully, I sent you a link if you're interested. It's up to you, though, bud. Okay, the man's from Montana. Okay, okay, I get that. He pleads guilty to federal charges. Okay, I've, I've seen that before. 
wildlife trafficking charges. Uh, okay, I've heard of that before. As part of years long effort. Okay, so apparently the breeding of the sheep isn't the issue. The having of the sheep is not the issue. The combination of sheep is not the issue. But the moving them across state and country lines is the issue. Hmm. How's that work out? What's up, Bootsy? Welcome back. Tiffany. Tiffany. Hello, hello. See. Um, I did a thing. Where's the thing? Did I do the thing right though? That's the question. I did it specifically for her. Skadoosh. Oops. No, no locking stuff. I see something. <laughs> Oh, that that's not going to work. <laughs> hey, we got another one in here. What's well, up, Jake? Hello. Why, how hello. Are you? Hello. How are you? I'm putting you in my pocket. <laughs> now <laughs> I got to do a thing. <laughs> Let's see. What are we doing? This one. Right. Um, actually, I don't have one for you yet. I'm going to have to make one. Welcome in, Andrew. So if I crash in the middle of this, it's your fault. Just so you know. It's not my fault. It's, it's Jake's fault. Oh. Jake the snake. Jake the snake. <laughs> 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 oh. You gotta do it right or it don't come up right. Your channel's kind of hard to find. We're gonna use this one. Save my channel is. A little bit. You kind of got to be specific with it. Like you can't have the space in it. Right? That's because there's no space in it. I, uh. I get that. Do, do, do. What I'm saying is if there there's a whole other group of, of screwballs out there that do an untethered live type thing uh, that have nothing to do with you. And, and if you're not paying attention, it's very easy. But I don't think that worked. It didn't work at all, did it? Nope, no, no, it's definitely not working. I don't like it like that. I prefer it when it works. How about you? A douche, and now this one. Yep, it didn't work. I mean, that's good. You just got to move my name or take it off. I'm working on it, man. All Come right, so on, let's go, let's go. It's all happening so fast. I mean, you send out invites for people. You got to be ready to come. You That's know? the thing, though. You see, here's the thing about all that. I don't know if anybody's going to actually show up to this freaking madness. What's up, Tony's Coffee House? Welcome in, bud. So uh, you're welcome to link your stream if you wish to. Uh, Untethered Love. Okay. I don't seem to be capable of uh, chatting. You, you'll you have to link some kind of how in order for your chat to actually hook up, whether you just link your chat or you actually restream this to your channel. But did you hear about the giant hybrid sheeps? Oh, is that what you're talking about? I thought you said that we were going to talk about giant pillow sleeps. <laughs> that sounds fucking awesome. That's so much better show than I had planned tonight. Damn it. You know, in that case, I'm just going to end it now and leave because there's no point going on. You've come up with a better show than I had planned. So, hey, Jot, it's your turn. What? You Welcome in, Dennis. Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> I will give me the money. Give you give me the money. Okay. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I've uh I've been a busy little bugger in the backgrounds for funds, right? Right. Um, um that's Alpha. weird. Okay, no, that works. That's fine. Okay. I still haven't figured out exactly how all of this works in the vertical format thing, you know? Well, it works by jacking up your uh, subscribership i'll tell you that i think yours is somewhat unique i went back and looked at your back uh actually for this tidbit let's do this back what the hell? sorry sorry all right, that's all you boo that's all, all right so check it out 
This man down here, if I'm not mistaken, has not missed a Wednesday is going on two years. Right? We had a live stream every Wednesday night for how long? Seven, seven years. Seven years. Not one missed live stream, not once on Wednesdays. When you go live on Wednesdays, that shit triggers something in the freaking algorithm that works on the live on the shorts live stream feed, but doesn't work so well in the normal live stream feed. Mm -hmm. You go from what, like six people in one of your Monday, Tuesday, or Saturday jobs, or what is it, uh, Friday? When is it? Well, it's between twenty and fifty, sometimes six. Yeah. Right. But what I'm saying is like you're you're the ones where you've missed a day or two, it doesn't have the same zing in the algorithm. Is my yeah. observation. I could be wrong. I might be overthinking this crap too much, but it does seem to have uh, Wednesday is a sweet spot for you, bro. Seems to work that way, doesn't it? I'm but doing I'm doing the vertical thing on Wednesday. So right. I'm, I'm streaming from my phone on Wednesday so I can get some subscribers because I don't typically gain a lot of subscribers when I do long form videos. But you use OBS to do your uh your vertical your 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 streams on your computer, correct? No, I'm just using my phone. No, no, I mean on your computer when you stream. You're using OBS, yes. correct? Yes. You can reset that to do this in vertical. That's really what I'm currently. Or you can use StreamYards, and if you're not doing a panel show, you turn off all of your filters and the sound filters, and you can control all the sound in it raw. Do they have like a uh, plug-in for vertical? For OBS? yeah, it's, it's literally well, no. Uh, in in OBS, I'll, you got to do it. I think it's uh, 1080 by 1920. Instead of 1920 by 1080, you just go in and physically change the parameters of it, and okay. it stacks it by itself. Um, once you're in the proper vertical format, you go up on uh, YouTube in that format as part of the shorts live stream feed. I am going to have to try that. Now, I, well, I don't like doing it from my phone because it doesn't sound good, and I have none oh, yeah. of the bells and whistles. Right. Um, so... Welcome in, Janica. Janica! Janica! I like that name. That's a good one. She's an alien. Hello, Sig. Welcome in, bud. Good to see you. A, a minute ago, there was a beautiful smile on screen. What happened to it? <laughs> what? No, there not a beautiful is. smile. <laughs> Come on now. Show that pretty pun to the world. Oh, no. Right. Chubba cheeks. I got them baby cheeks now. That's, that's Wouldn't that be a post baby cheek thing? Yeah. All right. So yeah. the downside is <laughs> right. You just had babies. Hold on. Well, just, but not babies. Just, just, just one, one, just one. one baby girl. But yeah, almost eight months ago. Well, congratulations to you Thank and Daddy. You. Thank you. I know how that is. Yeah, that's so Daddy. That's my baby still daddy. <laughs> Don't laugh at me. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I like your hair down, by the Thank way. You, you look it. very, you know, sexy, man. Just saying. So there you go. Can there we go, go back to John Hybrid Sheep yet? Yeah, we we sure can. <laughs> but I can't hear anything. Why not? Because I didn't have my headphones on. That makes no sense. Oh, yeah, no, I got you. <laughs> Put them on. You got to have them cans on. All right. Um, you can put me back in your pocket. Okay, I'll go. Yeah. This Inside is confusing. The pocket this of this the is clown. confusing, and he's afraid of change. <laughs> <laughs> I had an epiphany last night. I, I realized something. Oh, was it painful? Just, uh, a little painful. Um, this is probably going to tick off a handful of folks out there, but it occurred to me. Flow State has a very unique panel, and I've been watching a lot of it, trying to figure out exactly what it is that he's got going on that I'm not understanding, right? Because there's something there, and I can't quite put my finger on it. And it occurred to me this morning. He operates his panel like a round table. He doesn't give a diddly damn about any one of us, any one of you, 
you can go in say your piece or you can sit there quietly and just be seen or you can say something stupid and get smoked up it's up to you and so i told him i sent him, i sent him a message a while back i said uh since you're 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 actually running something of a round table why shouldn't you lean into the concept of king arthur the whole freaking way i know it sounds a little nerdy but he's such a douchebag dude bro he could pull it off he could make it work because who are we talking about uh flesh state i don't know who that is okay i'm just saying he <laughs> he pulls in like you do on wednesday he pulls that shit in on a nightly basis and oh, it's good. Because of drama and, and like the, I don't know. I he can't follow crazy. half the crap. Yes. Organized right. chaos, I guess. So let me explain how I accidentally fell into that. Um, you, you've heard of Paul enslaved from flow state. I'm sure you've heard the name Paul. Sure. I was, I have heard the um, name Paul before. Yes. I, I, oh God, I, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I hosted broken system, broken trust, broken, you know what I'm talking about. Is that yes. right? Broken system. Broken trust. And, I hosted yeah. him. and at some point in time, he ended up on a Paul panel and he was restreaming it from Paul's channel and he dropped the stream yard link in his chat. And then when I, happened through to give him a like and move on you know uh he asked me to come up and i, and I make an appearance for previous guests and so i popped up there and the next thing i knew i was on a panel with someone who was quite obviously completely insane and it took me right a minute to kind of, yeah much like today with you <laughs> yes so I eventually was just like okay well i made an appearance i came to say hi y'all have a lovely evening and i moved on right I just didn't think much about it. It was a couple of weeks later that I stumbled into, um, I want to say it was what's up Cynthia's chat and saw a bunch of people just melting down over the dude, over that guy. And I was just, I was so freaking baffled by the whole concept that it just, I couldn't get it. And then flow state showed up in my chat. And, and after that, we got to talking about the, the use of law cows and drama as a profit generating mechanism. And yes. I sent a bunch of links to a bunch of different channels that do exactly that. Mm -hmm. Right. And I don't know if any of that stuff sunk in or, or if he realized, <laughs> Oh, Hey, no, this is the kind of show we do right here. I seem to remember you and I have, Oh, look at that. That is a beautiful baby. That is a beautiful baby. I did What's good. his name. Her. Her. What's her name? She doesn't have her, her earphones on. She I don't have my headphones on. Sorry. It's uh, Justice. Uh, justice. Well, yes. Obviously. <laughs> I love it. She's beautiful. Why is, you. why is YouTube trying to tell me about vertical streaming while I'm doing it? I don't know. Mm. Anyway. I remember us having a conversation about negativity in my streams because I was taking down a bunch of atheists and you told me that people don't like negativity. And I was like, negativity sells. You, it bleeds. It leads. Yeah. No, I hear what you're saying, but you were, uh, you're operating out of both sides of your mouth because of the nature of what you're trying to do. You have a religious propensity towards a certain frame of thought. And yes. because of that, when you go negative, it looks really bad just on its surface, not not as an opinion, but as a fundamentalist sticking point. You know, it's it's literally a stick to beat you with if someone showed up to use it properly. They'd but, have a hard time because I'm pretty do you, quick. Do your thing, man. You do you. You do the thing. You know how I feel about that kind of stuff. It's your <laughs> chat. <laughs> Sorry. Can we have a conversation about feet and their attractive features? Yes. <laughs> oh my god, that's Wait, funny. Which one is this? Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. How did how did Quentin Tarantino get this stream? So what you don't know is I have an OnlyFans out there and mm. in it I walk on cakes. <laughs> That's all I do. It's my feet on cakes. And I'm not going to tell you where it is or how to find it. You probably already subscribed. You really? Seriously? Are you being for real? Or are you just kidding? <laughs> I 
Well, that, I that might be that. under contract not to discuss whether or not I am certain creators. Well, I have an OnlyFans, but I just show my elbow. That's all. <laughs> Oh you have all 17 of the elbow files out there. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Joe, look at that baby, isn't that sexy? Baby. Look at that. You want me to get it wet? I'm, oh my God. That's absurd. Yeah. What, is, what is wrong with you? Oh, wait. Um, oh, yeah. I don't Joe know. says he doesn't believe in atheists. Look, see, it's catching on. Yeah, baby. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> <laughs> good girl bro i don't know i can't figure out whose chat you're in mine but that last okay. one might get you bro <laughs> <laughs> just saying though how about them giant hybrid sheep God, yes. cats. <laughs> effort to create a giant hybrid sheep <laughs> okay that's that's where it goes sideways and by the way for captive hunting uh, I guess is uh, the reason he's doing this. He's not just a mad scientist, but the defendant works to traffic Marco Polo sheep parts from Kyrgyzstan. He tried to clone sheep. He was also working with ewes, which is female sheep, to create hybrids in an attempt to traffic Rocky Mountain bighorn sheep parts. And so that's another, I guess, parallel uh accusation the montana man pleaded guilty to two felony wildlife crimes a conspiracy to violate the lacy act and substantively violating lacy act as part of an almost decade-long effort to create giant sheep hybrids in the u.s with an aim to sell the species to captive hunting facilities the man's 80 years i'm gonna write a country song about sheep shearing and i'm gonna call it there'll never be another you E W E. I like linguistic humor. The grammar Nazis of the world will hate you. E W E. <laughs> What's up, Izzy? Welcome in, Scully. Good to see you, bud. <laughs> Girl, you need to be careful. Your ass going to get a whole list. <laughs> I'm out. I would if it was paid right. Plot I mean, game. I I, I can. I mean, hey, it's okay. Give it. To yeah, me. I I get you, Melissa. No money, yeah, no. Mm -mm. Right. All right. So so we were discussing the giant sheeps, and <laughs> I was curious. I think is the issue him selling them out of state to other parks. Um, I think the issue is cloning sheep. Just. Period. Period. Or, or are you talking unethical. about speaking legally? He he just pled guilty to 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 federal charges of trafficking in uh, prohibited animals of some so, sort. So is he selling parts or full animals? Uh, his plan. Apparently, he's been doing this for a few years, and his plan was to breed a giant sheep. Right. So he was combining cloning and and like CRISPR type stuff stuff yeah. you know trying to create these these hybrid but i don't know what breeds he was messing with well with it's the exception of crispr and in a laboratory cloning is illegal in america so there has to be some element of that involved well now that's not entirely accurate there is a a wormhole there's a loophole in that where when in vitro and uh, when you in vitro fertilize, you are allowed to split from the from the zygote. Yes, several different clones, and that is but by the, definition the simplest of cloning. That uh, is cloning, but they call it in vitro fertilization. So nah, right, nah, 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 nah. right. Well, I mean, if you are utilizing all of this in vitro in the first place, you can. You just can't grow a living sheep is the thing. But the, the, the breaking point seems to be at the point where you implant it. Yeah. It becomes illegal, which is really weird. I think, you know, with people crossing the border, they should probably not worry so much about what people do with their sheep. Hey, man. And that's just my Texas thought. is deporting motherfuckers. Ain't you heard? I mean, wow. And, 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 and just so 
you are it's it was an 80 year old montana rancher and it was five of his co-conspirators they wanted to breed them or make them or whatever you want to say to sell them to hunting preserves so it wasn't mm -hmm. that he was keeping it on his own well in the beginning you said for you know him and his own but no but that was my question. That was a question I asked. I was like, would it be different if he, if he had his 10,000 acre ranch up there and he was just growing them up there for hunting on his own private reserve or whatever. On the other hand, if you're selling them to other places to be hunted, I could see how the federal government get their panties in a twist on that pretty freaking quick. Especially if he was doing it, uh, sans any type of, uh, uh, what do you call it? License, not that's not the word. I'm how, looking for. how would you license something that's never been permit? Done? Permit. I'm looking for permit. Yet so. again, you, anything that's never been done before is legal by dint of there being no laws to stop it. Right? Yeah, I guess until um, someone does it and it's deemed, hey, that's not acceptable, and it goes through the court process and creates a case law, it's not illegal. I don't care how much you don't like it. <laughs> well that goes into a more esoteric question as to who do you call if the head place says you can't do that. I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. I'm not trying to get political, but a reporter just got arrested by the FBI for reporting. He works at the blaze. He didn't at the time, but he is a reporter <laughs> and he just got arrested for reporting on January 6th. He didn't do anything. He wasn't there in, in the capacity of the crowd. He was with a camera reporting, and they just arrested him for it. So that's illegal, First Amendment rights and all. But who do you call if the FBI says you can't do that? There's nobody above the FBI. So if they say it's illegal, it's illegal. Ghostbusters. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So, so they cloned 165 Marco Polo embryos. Okay. Well, That'll be an interesting pool party. <laughs> Marco, 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 Marco. Is anybody <laughs> here Polo? <laughs> I don't know. That's uh, what me and my family whistle at each other when we get lost in stores, separated. You're walking around and you hear somebody go, and someone else out there go polo their goal was to create a larger and more valuable species of sheep to sell to captive hunting facilities primary in texas go figure you know, does the yeah. government sell sheep not that i'm aware of because that might be what it's about too because they might be encroaching on somebody else's territory who has a, a congressman in his pocket I think we can all agree that there, that this has so many layers of horrible wrong shit involved in it um, that whether or not it's legal is kind of a secondary consideration. Yeah. <laughs> this man's going to hell for creeping on God's plan personally. <laughs> I mean, hey, maybe he's part of God's plan. I don't know. He can hope so. And here's what I have to say about atheists. You know, they really hope they're right. Yes. The alternative is terrifying. Um, uh, somebody said, and it's probably Albert Einstein, but it might have been somebody else. But the sentiment remains, regardless of who said it. Either there is a God or there is not. And both prospects are terrifying. That's true. That is absolutely true. Um, I, I've always gone by the premise, uh, there is difference in faith and faith. You have faith with a capital F and faith with a lowercase f. I have lowercase f faith that two plus two equals four. Mm -hmm. But I have a capital F faith in the existence of a creator of some sort. Amen. I have no faith in my ability to describe it, name it, talk to it, negotiate with it, speak with it, commune with it in any capacity. Well, that's why people like me have a job. And I'm not starting cults. So, you know. That's why people like me have a job. For starting cult. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good luck. Hey, I'm just doing what I'm told, brother. All right. So 
The next video is when cops turn out to be the suspect. Mm. So, cops. <laughs> All right. Yeah. No, that was that was this guy right here. <laughs> Just say you know, you know. <laughs> cops. Okay, so it's cops. I already find them a bit suspect in the first place. I'm not gonna lie. My point exactly. Her arms wrapped around her neck, and Amy was falling down. She had her, did she have her hand around her throat? Or I don't know if it was like this or if her hand was, I believe her hand was like this and the other arm was around it like this. Friends, this is police officer Megan Glory. On June the 8th, 2017, her ex-girlfriend, Deanna Stevenson, entered the home of her current girlfriend, Amy Plunkett. In oh, the home trio. is Megan, Amy, their mother, Ollie, and Deanna. Mm. Unfortunately, Deanna ends up dead. What happened? Who took her life? In this video, I'm going to show you the interrogations of all those involved. I'm going to start with Megan. Let's see what happened. Tell me what happened this morning. I was sleeping and I heard Amy's mom come in and say someone's at the door. So then Amy got up and I got up behind her and they opened the door and Deanna was out there. Mm -hmm. And they were starting screaming and yelling and then Deanna said, take me home, take me home. So I was trying to put her down because I believe she was drunk. I'm not really sure, mm -hmm. but she reeked. And the then, alcohol. Mm -hmm. okay. And then um she I got in between her and Amy because they were screaming at each other and I said, You need to leave, you need to go. Get in your car and go. I've seen this one before. And she jumped somewhere. through me and attacking me and had Amy by the neck and was choking her. At that point, I don't know who when got you, when you say choking, uh choking her, what, what do you mean choking? How was that? Like her arms were wrapped around her neck and Amy was falling down. She had her, did she have her hand around her throat? Or I don't know if it arm? was like this or if her hand was, I believe her hand was like this and the other arm was around it like this. Um, and then they were falling. So then I was trying to pry Deanna off of her and I was telling stop, stop. And I don't know who got the gun. I don't know. I don't know if her mom got it out or if Amy got it out before then. I'm not really sure. So you never saw the gun? No, the gun. I never saw it. I had no clue who even had it. Mm -hmm. So then I'm telling Deanna to leave, you know, get off of her, get off her, and I'm trying to pull her off. Well, then she tries to get me and hit me. And so Amy, they're still wrestling back and forth. And then that's when she was shot. Okay. It all happened like so fast. I don't even know what to feel. Do you, uh, what's your past with uh, Deanna? Abusive. So, okay, let's back. <laughs> So hold up, just just so you're aware. So in the beginning, you know, she she stated that Deanne or whatever smelled like alcohol. She thought she was drunk. But then a few sentences later, she sits there and says, you know, I told her to get in the car and go. So what? Like if you're an officer and you think she's drunk and you tell her to get in the car and go like that's. What? <sighs> Sounds like an alibi. Yeah, we're we're constructing stuff. And she thinks since she's a cop, she'll be able to get away with it. That's the sad part. What's up, Havoc? <laughs> the butler did it in the dining room with the candlestick. Yeah. <laughs> uh this is a new feature on YouTube where they allow you to stream into the shorts feed live. And uh so I've been tinkering with it, trying to figure out how to make it a viable thing and whether or not it should be messed with at all. Or maybe it's deep Satanist chicanery. I don't know. Figure we play with it. <laughs> it's me jiggling the handle. Right. Uh, I actually got the eye from this cracker here. Oh, look up. Oh, there you are. Mm -hmm. Yep. Hello. And uh, I was sitting over there watching his Wednesday streams going, the hell's going on here? the hell's going on what what the hell this guy's bored as hell why is anybody listening to him there's 30 people over there they're all sitting around going uh, you got a funny looking mustache bud <laughs> hey do you know any metallica <laughs> did you just Free say Martin. i was boring yeah especially when you start talking so here's the thing about the main issue with the whole vertical streaming part oh don't let it be like, it's supposed to have a smart ass comeback, bud. Do it. Do the smart ass comeback part. 
We use Dink. I know. <laughs> That's why I use Dr. Squatch. <laughs> Sponsor me. I will sell so much soap. I'm sponsored by Duck Gate. What's up, Katie? Welcome in. Um, bum, bum. So, oh yeah, by the way, up top, the gaming that you see up top, that's uh, Samuel the Infamous's channel. You can go find most of this stuff on his God of War playlist. Mainly because I'm lazy and didn't want to do the gaming myself. Right. Katie would like to ask a question. Sure. Sure. I mean, that time. What's the worst <laughs> thing happen? You could ask me a very specific question and me go. <gasps> dun dun dun. Yeah, exactly. Some dun dun dun. But more likely, what will happen is you'll ask a very specific question, and then. Ooh -woo. Ooh -woo. I get really <laughs> You can ask anything you like as long as it doesn't have nouns, syllables, or phrases. Right? No commas, no periods. We can't even tolerate any amount of punctuation. Good luck. Are you all right? Yeah, I am. You good? All right. So does anybody believe this chick here? No, absolutely okay. not. Uh, do you reckon she's hitting on her... Uh, her uh, co-workers I think she may have eaten one of them <laughs> for six years we own our house have she has a son um we broke up a little over a year ago and it's been rocky ever since um she would threaten me and she was abusive in the past threaten you by means of what like calling me and threatening me that she was gonna um self and not threatening me like for my life to be in danger but threatening like to Self, mm -hmm. um, or Amy to kill Amy. Um, and then, so we haven't lived together in probably f four or five months. Um, Did you know her to have any uh, possession of firearms or anything like that? Deanna? Mm -hmm. No, she has none. She has no firearms. Mm -mm. There was never, let me rephrase it, there was never any in our house mm -hmm. when we lived together. So I don't know if there is now. I don't right. know because she works at the prison in uh, Milton. Okay. Um, so I don't know if there is now. I don't know if there's any in her car. I have no clue what her intentions were. She's never come to the house before like that. Um, and I know she worked last night and the last thing she I talked to her. She had asked me to go feed the dogs um that are at our house, her two dogs. Um Did I miss the question? I'm still waiting for the question. What was the question? Yeah, Katie. She didn't ask the question. If she could ask the question, yeah, maybe that was the question. Uh, oh, okay, yes. Um, and I told her, okay, I wasn't gonna be able to make it. Then her mom said she was gonna go do it, so I put my house key at her mom's house, and that was the last I had talked to her. And then at like eight thirty, she texted my phone and said, "What did she say?" <laughs> oh. Amy has a hold on you. And I forgot what the other message said. And then that was it. I never, I said, I'm not doing this with you tonight. I'm not fighting with you. Have a good night or bye or something. And she said, oh, you never do. And that was at like 840 last night. And I had talked to her since then. And I went to sleep last night and then woke up this morning. I have no clue what time it even was this morning. You might have misspelled bait, but I don't think it's bear. <laughs> it's uh, she, she, all right. So if I remember correctly. She was involved in a shooting in either her home or her mother's home or her friend's home. I never could pin down whose home it occurred in. A friend shows up saying something about some negative crap going on. And then someone else showed up that she knows apparently was allowed to come in at some point in time. And in the process of an argument, she ends up being shot. If I remember correctly. And, um, her description of events and the other two people's description of events are not jibing. They're not Here's great. what I think happened. I think she hooked up with her ex-girlfriend and they were in bed together. 
and her ex-girlfriend's boyfriend came to the house beating on the door, and she decided to go with him, and in her jealous rage, she shot her. Well, no males were involved in the filming of, of the harming of these people <laughs> until they showed up at the police station. No males were involved in the harming of these women. <laughs> well, maybe it was a third girlfriend then. But I know, uh, I know they get catty, but I think it was the roommate's, uh, home and her mom was there and a whole bunch of weird shit went down. It was her best Y'all friend. Y'all totally roommate. have the story like wrong. I mean, first of all, you have this little button rewind. But second of all, so the police officer and Amy, which is where that house, which is the house that the incident happened at, are a current couple. Right. Right. They live with Amy's mom. Deanne is the ex girlfriend, the crazy ex girlfriend that came oh. over to the current girlfriend's house where she was at. Well, maybe it's just so simple. Maybe she's just a terrible shot. <laughs> <laughs> she intended to shoot the crazy ex-girlfriend and instead shot no, her the crazy girlfriend. ex-girlfriend got shot. That's the person. That's, that's the one that's dead. Maybe she's yeah. an amazing shot. <laughs> <laughs> There's yeah, no men were harmed in the filming of this picture. Her <laughs> being the door. Okay. When you were able to get in there, what did you hear her saying? Who's saying? Uh, Deanna. All I heard her say was, "Where's Meg? Where's Meg?" <laughs> We've covered this one before. You I and don't me. Remember. You do too. You just told the whole story without anybody. That's because I remember what the guy said in the beginning of the video for once. I was paying attention. Screw that guy. Anything more important than my ego needs to be hunted down a shot <laughs> immediately. Why do you think I'm the only one on camera? <laughs> X Havoc, X Havoc gets the partition award as of right now. So their interaction ended with a penetration. Oh, the irony. Oh, yeah. the irony. <laughs> we, have, we have our new participation trophy winner. We have uh, a winner. <laughs> winner, winner, chicken dinner. Yeah, I'm okay. What's up, smoking auditor? Welcome in, bud. Smoking this. auditor. Yo. All right, so I kind of feel like you've already blown everything in this story. That there's nothing. No, wrong. that's that's. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know how she ended up dead. Oh, it's probably the bullets. Because I didn't initially, I didn't go out because I was asleep. So I got up after like a minute after Amy had opened the door, and they were—I don't know what they were saying. They were exchanging words of some sort. I think she was saying, leave or get off my porch, get off my porch, leave. Um, and then Deanna kept saying, where's Meg? Where's Meg? Where's Meg? When I come around the corner and I said, what do you want? What do you need? And she said, take me home. And I said, what, what is the deal? And then Amy said, you need to get in your car. You need to leave. You need to leave. Well, then at that point she had attacked Amy and I believe she went after her mom. When you say she attacked Amy, what did she do? She just like lunged at her and then put her arms around her and she was punching her. Um, she was punching her for sure. Um, and then she had her by the throat and that's whenever I tried to get in and break it up. And then that's whenever the gunshot happened. And then after, after the shots. All right, flow state, here's what I mean. You do a round robin type of panel where everybody gets to have their little two or three minutes of say, and they can get as much out as possible. And then you have the people that scream over folks and you tend to kind of keep them on a little bit tooled in. And so it's like a round table panel, right? If you get your channel newt from orbit and you don't come back as King Taylor, <laughs> I'm talking straight up like emperor of man, bad photoshopping the whole nine with the crown and the freaking light shining up for your head. You you're a moron. If you can't pull that one off, that one's an easy sell. But it would be a great visual gimmick to kind of give give your shows a certain kind of conceptual continuity 
as to what you're trying to actually do. It explains <laughs> it without actually having to sit down and go, well, I'm trying to let everybody have their say, you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> The Pope, yeah, no, yeah, no, but you're not God Emperor of Mankind, you know, or Arthur. I mean, King Arthur had, had Excalibur. He, you know, there's a lot that can be done there. I'm just saying a clever boy could make it work. <laughs> I don't know if you're a clever boy, but I figure if you douchebag and earring it enough, it'll be all right. I resent that. What'd you do or what'd you see? You should. After that, Amy knelt down by her and was trying to cover her up um and then is it because you resembled her, that obviously and then she yelled to me go get a towel go get a towel so and, I got a towel bag and, your earring. and then she was yeah and I, I was outside the whole time after that I what mean, where did the with... gum come from? Did she have it in her underwear? Because they no, were in she, bed. She tripped down the stairs and fell onto some bullets. Uh, <laughs> yeah she was shot twice in the back of the head it was obviously suicide listen um the gun in her first statement was on a table next to the door. And, and the second statement was in the drawer of the table next to the door. But either way, I don't Oh, like, you can remember about the gun, but you can't remember about the people in the scenario. It's important to know where guns are. Yeah. True. Does anybody check for gunshot residue? Uh, they're they're in the process of working up charges and whatnot. This is what this is. It all just happened about thirty minutes ago, and now they're all being debriefed separately, which is uh, you know, how it goes. And you are not the god emperor of mankind. I am. <laughs> what happened? And then you were on the phone with me, and I was trying to get her to breathe and talk to her, but that point was. Tell me about what uh, you saw when she had Amy by the throat. So I believe she had her like this and then her arm wrapped around her. And Amy was like trying to breathe, of course. And then they went backwards. Was she gasping or did, was she? Now Flo stayed over here letting freaking cops into heaven. What? There goes the neighborhood, man. Oh, meth gator. Yeah, no, you pass. <laughs> she wasn't saying anything. No, she wasn't saying anything. And then they fell back into the, the two chairs on the front porch. And I was at that point trying to pull Dee and I said, please stop, please stop. And then from there, everything else. I don't know what happened after that. And then I was in the middle. I know I was in the middle of them too. And she tried to lunge. What's up, Toe Daddy? She, tried to, um, she was hitting Amy in the face. And then I said, stop, stop. And then she had her by the throat. After she hit her in the face, and that's when they both fell to the ground. Behind. And that's when they fell to the ground, and then the gunshots. Then I started blasting. In no universe did she say, Stop, stop. I just, I'm so in shock. I don't even what happens. I don't. Well, I'm going to write the report, obviously. And I still don't talk to him this morning. Um, how long have you all? You stayed. Uh, I owed Flow State one. See, Flow State transferred into Snitch State the other night and blew my cover for being like a, a secret shopper in, in his chat. Like, <laughs> M went ballistic one night and just started mowing down chat with blocks. And I don't mean like timeouts, bitch was blocking everybody right like i was the only reason i was safe because i had a wrench and i was like yeah but are you okay she didn't respond just blocking motherfuckers just block 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 banished from the channel invisible for sight probably got kicked out of chat <laughs> given one of those little boxes saying you upset somebody too much <laughs> you know what i'm saying uh and and I and I sent him a text. Was like, "Hey, M just went freaking ham on chat. Like she's gone full cane over here. And she's taking out one third of the Earth's population in here. You need to get a grip on it." Finish him. <laughs> Biblical. And you still stay in contact with Deanna? Yes. Well, for the house reason. I mean, she would text me and call me and stuff, and we would communicate for, like, bills or the dogs or whatever. Does she have another girlfriend? I believe so, but I don't know for sure. I'm not 100% sure on that. We're not, we don't talk about things like that. Mm -hmm. I know she was with somebody, but I don't know if they're still together. 
if they were still together. Tell me about the restraining order that you had on them. Okay, so that was back, I don't even know the month, but that was due to her, um, every time I'd go to the house, she would yell, scream, try and hit me. She had been abusive, had pushed me down, had grabbed me by the throat a couple of times. Um, and so I just, I felt unsafe and um, not safe in my home. Mm-hmm. So that's when I finally thought I was done with this. I mean, something needs to happen. Um, so I did the restraining order. Um, she went and stayed wherever she went and stayed. And then we went to court and then everything was, there wasn't enough evidence to continue. continue it. So then it was thrown out and then she stayed in the house and I didn't stay back in the house after that. Uh, did she say anything after the restraining order was, um, was, uh, dismissed? She had any kind of physical altercations or anything like that? I never that? went around for that to happen again. Okay. Um, when I went to the house one time afterwards, she Welcome threw in, a dish on the ground, but buddy. she didn't like attack me with it. She didn't throw Hold it on. Me Hold on. But. You're triggering it, dude. You triggered it. There was a fire fight. It's one of my favorite <laughs> lines. Oh my God. I love that movie. Agent Schmecker style. Damn right. Like an Agent Schmecker was the man. <laughs> I mean, you can say what you want about Willem Dafoe, but that man is a hell of an actor. He is, oh, talk about commitment, dude. He should have been committed years ago. I hope <laughs> That was it. I never was around her alone again to experience any other. Do you, um, and I assume that uh, just by looking at Deanna and then looking at Amy, Deanna's quite a bit bigger than Amy is. Mm-hmm. Um, during the time that, that Deanna was choking Amy, did you have any feelings? As far, How did that make you feel? Did you feel like Amy was in fear of her life, of being choked out? I did feel that, yes, because I know, I've, I've felt the end of Deanna before. She has abused me before. She has choked me before. So I know the feeling. So, yes, I was very scared. And I didn't want any of this, of course, to happen. But I did feel, and I tried to stop it. I tried to pull Deanna off because I know how she gets, right. especially after she's been drinking. When she's been drinking, it's kind of out with the anger. Okay. But I don't even know what possessed her to come to the house and drive her car. I, I don't know. How did she know that where y'all live? She's driven by before, and I believe her girlfriend or ex-girlfriend, whoever she is, told her because Amy knows her, and that's how I can only assume she knows. That's where we live. Okay. Who was sleeping on the couch right there inside the door? Amy's mom. So Amy's mom was there, and y'all were in the bedroom. Mm-hmm. Okay, is that normal? Is it mm-hmm. her mom to sleep on the yeah. couch? Yeah, either on the couch or in the uh, on a blow-up mattress. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll be right back with you. Okay. All right. Uh, the scene's been, been released. Uh, we're going to get you guys back over there. Uh, when you get there, we're going to have to take all of your clothes. We're going to need you to change. And then we're just going to take the clothes you have. You're taking these clothes right yeah. now? Okay. But we'll do it once we get over there. Okay. Whose jacket do you have? So one of the officers, um, he drove here. Oh, okay. Far or one of them guys? Not far, but what is his name? Amy knows his name. Okay. Megan's still behind me because I'm not letting her out the doorway. Did Deanna step up into the door? She yes, I just skipped that. At this point, Megan had we had stepped out onto the stoop. Now this is the mother, and, right? Um, she grabbed Megan. Or is this like, the on, other chick? And I'm like, no, this is the chick. Okay. Okay. This is the current girlfriend. Face. Right, right. <laughs> it's her mom. She, she lives. That's the current girlfriend there. Her mom is the one who was sleeping on the couch. The big window. Uh, apparently, both of mine, and it was just. How did you confuse that one with the other one? Come out, and I tell her we're telling no, her to no. get back in. I'm trying to tell Megan to get back in. She's trying. Um, she's trying to get in between. That's yeah, the you mom. Remember this one, right? And she's just steadily swinging with the missing and leg. At this point, she has got me. No, I don't. I don't. I don't. I swear to God, you were here with me. Check this check out. Okay, so Where's her leg at? Right there, just inside she's the door. Man's breading. And what did you hear? Or what? Did you oh, say? it goes way farther. There was there was a whole conversation about about nubbies. 
Watch what this cop does. Hold on. Let me make sure we're at the beginning of this bit. This is one of the wildest parts to me. This cop keeps filling up that nub. Like, he is constantly reaching over and touching that freaking nub. You just watch. Shut up. He gave me the heebie-jeebies in the word, man. I'm telling you. It was like trigger. a nubby? I don't know what is up, but eventually when she stands up, her leg pops into existence again. She suddenly she's has sitting on it. I guess so. But she sits here for almost a straight two hour interview on that foot. You know, that motherfucker dead as Dillinger by the time she stands up. <laughs> right. I mean, good. Lord. It does look like there is no leg though. It just looks like there's a stump and, and, Three or four times during this interview, homie is reaching over and patting on that own. Nuh -uh. Nuh -uh. I'm dead fucking I, serious. Well, until you show it to me, I don't believe you. Oh my god. <laughs> until a uh, what? <laughs> He's don't over worry, there. I'm a professional. I, I can rub <laughs> nubs all day. <laughs> right how far up her ass can she shove wood foot's my question apparently far enough that it disappears completely hmm. because of proximity to rubber rooms hmm. well i'm gonna say it since no one else is going to nobody smell her toes <laughs> huh yeah no you can't mess around with acdc at all bro like I, I even got what was it? I didn't get a strike. I, I got like a, a a regional block or a regional yeah, regional block because I played uh half of um actually a particular section out of Steven Siegel's version of Blue. Oh Drive. mom shot the gun. Oh good. That's what it just said. Cool. You mean too, sweetheart. Buckshot but you have mama. to protect yourself and you have to protect your family. You're in your own home. Okay. <laughs> well, mama's the only one crying, so she's probably the guilty. <laughs> so the question comes down to whether it falls under self defense or not. Well, depends and, on what state you're in. Well, it. There's a few other considerations. If the mother was sleeping on the couch, then she's probably not the owner of the residence, which means that there's several considerations here, right? Because well, once from the way the cop is is directing the conversation was, you know, she had to protect her home. Well, depending on what state you're in, that works. <laughs> In Florida, it's a suggestion. Somebody walks in your house, shoot them out the door. So I'm trying to get belt loop to get me one of them turtle suits. <laughs> I'm going to paint it green and get me a purple bandana and be Donatello. Seeing he's telling her, you know, you did the right thing. You had to take care of yourself. You had to protect yourself, protect your family. But do you trust him? You're um, in your own home. I don't trust she, cops, no. She, but. Shouldn't she already have uh dude, you could be Leonardo and I can look at you and go, bro, now what, fearless leader? Car Thief News, bro, do you have access to your email address? Or if you don't have email address access, email me. Uh like I, I need you to email me yesterday so I can send you the link to this before uh, today so that you can show up on time to be here. <laughs> What's up, bud? Welcome out of jail. Homie's been in jail for freaking what almost a year and a half, 394 wow. days. That's what oh, that's a year and a half, ain't it? A year and three months. Something like that. 
He's probably got the most experience with the turtle suit lately. <laughs> yes. All right. Freaking email me so I can find your freaking email. Do you want a link? I'll send you one. And you can oh, my gosh. Car Thief what? News is in the chat. I know. I've been talking to him for three fucking minutes. Oh, I've been reading because you muted it, and I wanted to hear the rest of the story. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> my bad <laughs> uh, two days shy is 14 months yeah 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 but uh i got my email open over here i just i don't know i'll try it might work fired for my job why would you be fired you're protecting yourself miss plunkett they yeah. have Companies don't like you. I don't know why I just you don't said worry that. About that. You don't worry about that. I'm sure Sheriff Morgan would be proud of you for standing the ground in your home. And so would Marcus Savage. I know Marcus personally. I myself. wish I could talk to him right now. He's so funny. He's living with my baby. And Mr. Rogers, he's living with my baby. And Mr. Russell next door, bless his heart. He's my buddy. I know I scared him. I hope I didn't hurt him. I mean, if he was out. And my three cats. Well, and your little pug dog? That's Megan's. That's Megan's dog. They're all still there. They're in the house. We have them locked up and secured so that they can't run out. They can't escape while we're over there doing our thing. Is there a family been told yet? Her family? I haven't contacted any of them, dear. I wanted to get your side of it and talk with you and talk with Amy and talk with Megan. And we've done that. Her mothers. I know if I go home, they're probably going to come get me now. Who's going to come get you? I'll be your family and everybody. They're going to be mad. No, ma'am. You don't worry about that. Miss Plunkett, you did what you had to do to protect yourself. That woman was attacking you. She's a whole lot younger than you. She knows better than that. She drunk. I don't know that she's, I don't know that she's drunk. I know what Megan says and I know what Amy says about her drinking habit and stuff like that, but we won't know until we do the toxicology on her to see how much alcohol she, she has. Is in her so system. Doesn't she? she has a what? What's her name again? Uh Deanna. What up, bud? Welcome in. Hello. Welcome. Another day, bud Bert. Welcome back to the free air. I appreciate that. You do good. Was you was you a good boy? Why are you? Yeah, doing? yeah. <clears throat> you cheat on me. Don't lie. Of, of no. course. Good girl. <laughs> I mean, you're just too much of a man to keep myself. I gotta spread you around somewhere. So I'll be expecting my check. Um, <laughs> So, uh, what you been doing the past week? You've been out, what, about four days, five? Since last Wednesday. So, almost, yeah, so a week, a week and a day. Yep, a week and a day. Don't fuck it up. I'm calling no, this case three birds and a bullet. Three not birds. even remotely a chance. I like that, three birds and a bullet. Have you met Untethered Love? He's to your oh, oh yeah. left. Yeah, we met. And then Ajot, of course, is here. Absolutely. Is Toe around too? He's, he was. But he don't he's love you. He's around. Yes. Yeah. He's around. That's awesome. I sure have missed you guys. We miss you. Glad to see you walking in free air, buddy. Yeah. Homie yeah. Gets out. Me too. I'll tell you, free air, free air is sweet. Yeah. Homie gets out, checks his Facebook, and it's like, we're still waiting. Still waiting. Oh, it blew up, man. I'm Still telling you it, you, it blew up. I met you. Toe said he's in chat. <laughs> 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 and Melissa Stedman says she misses you too. Well, I get to talk to Melissa quite often, so. so here's you a good look at the man himself. He's free. He's clear. They have taken away his beard powers. But I, no, 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 no. I took my beard beard powers away. Well, I didn't have a I didn't have a haircut since early November. No, late October. Right. 
and my beard and head looked like, you know, uh, proper hobo trim. And I just looked like shit, so I cut it off as soon as I got out. Hmm. Plus, I cut about 20 years off my face, too. There you go. <laughs> we got a choice. People. We can either hear his or our mind. <laughs> is that okay, go or mine? That's funny. How, why is it, dude? You uh, you always get an echo with me, man. It, it's because you're on a cell phone. Okay, I'll give you that. Stupid thing hasn't been turned on in 14 months until last Wednesday. I still haven't gotten service back on, but uh, I'm on Wi Fi now. So I'm at least able to check in and let everybody know I'm home. Right. It's good stuff. Let's see. Trying to find your freaking icon. What's the topic of discussion tonight? At this moment, we are looking at a video. Jesus, that is annoying. Um, uh, interrogation video and a video game. Well, the video game is Samuel the Infamous playing God of War. And oh, okay. I just got more screen space than I really know what to do with. And so I'm kind of at a loss as to how to make it by no I means know, i know you have it in the descriptions uh no! oh no <laughs> what'd you do oh no what i'm in the process of getting some sweat some swag built <sighs> what'd you do i Somehow I just sent some random freaking YouTube link from Car Thief News's page to some file in my OBS somewhere. I'm surprised it's still running. I have no idea what I just did, but if you don't see me for a couple of days, that's why. <laughs> I'll be over there hunting through Oops. my freaking files. Yeah, no, that wasn't good. What's up, Joe Cocaeus Cop Watch? Joko, what's up, brother man? Can you put the link to the video we're watching in private chat? It's, so it's I in the, yeah. I okay. know, but I can't pull up the description right now. All right. God. God. More than likely. I'm having to recover my business account with Verizon. More than likely, I'm not going to have the same number. There is a small chance that I can get it back because no one's using it and it's not reserved for anybody. I've had that number for 19 years. Everything that I do is attached to that number. So if I do get it back, great. If I don't, I will be calling everybody on my list to give them the new number. Uh, hold on. I'm trying to catch back up to my whole chat thing. Um, um, somebody asked a pertinent question. What is the live about? What case is this interrogation of? The old lady sitting in the chair was was at her daughter's house when her daughter's ex-girlfriend or the cop's ex-girlfriend, I can't remember which, shows up at the house drunk, raising hell. Some shit went down and she shot her daughter's ex-girlfriend who was apparently drunk and crazy. Um, oh, wow. And I think this is a pretty good point to move on. So to the they don't have a stand your ground law in that state. Well, no, they were telling her that she shouldn't have to worry about anything that. Uh, She's that not a murderer. She had to protect her home. Justified. Well, I mean, in Georgia, once they cross the threshold, you're on your fucking own. Good luck, girl. Yeah. Don't make me send your mama the cleaning bills to my rugs. Do y'all have a no duty to retreat law in Georgia? Nope. We do. Does it matter? No. No, nah, if you retreat, they'll just come after you. Once you back off, it's like a... It's like... Well, a, it's what they call a stand-your-ground law. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, we go full castle doctor Angela around law. If you, I, I right. feel personally, if I am in public and some shit gets started and I am armed, I feel like it's my responsibility, provided it doesn't endanger anyone to do so, to leave. If at all possible, I will shut the fuck up and walk away. I will go and get in my car and I will go home. That's now, the same guy I am. If I go to my car and you follow me to my car and when I get in my car, you stand in front of my car and start banging on the hood with a weapon, I will riddle you with fucking holes. <laughs> See, we have a, a standard ground law here in Missouri, but the uh, Green County prosecutor, he likes to do unlawful use of a weapon exhibiting left, right, and center. Again, ask me how I know. Exhibiting? exhibiting. Oh, there's a, okay, well... There's a difference between display and what's the other is exhibiting brandishing. the other brandishing. brandishing. Right. Brandishing is pointing it at someone. Exhibiting is just showing it. So and Terry, let, let me cover in my this. Okay, I, if you pull I run off of your school open. Let me let me finish. If you pull your pistol and point it in the air, is that brandishing? No. Okay. That's exhibiting. If you do it in an angry or threatening manner. Now, of course, you rack off a couple of rounds and it's reckless discharge, but go ahead. Right, right. What Shooting if you put it in your mouth right? and say something clever like a one-liner? Better make it so, good. Like, suck my Glock, bitch. Like, go ahead, punk. <laughs> make my day. I like suck my Glock better. <laughs> what if they just puff on it like it's a bowl? There's like, well, yeah. Does that make they just them a call it? A, they just that, call it a shotgun, man. Do they make it? Does that make them a Glock smoker? <laughs> a Glock sucker. Right. Well, our our unlawful use of a weapon exhibiting reads that if a person exhibits or displays a weapon in an angry or threatening manner, readily capable of lethal use. That's an awful use of a weapon exhibiting. In my case, I stopped an imminent attack from three bouncers half my age on a disabled dude. And I didn't even point the gun at him. I just stopped an imminent attack. Hello, and Jerry never Trump. got a chance to. I didn't get to defend myself on the sidewalk. And I didn't get to defend myself in court. I already have a direct appeal in on that conviction. Uh, because I didn't even give a single word of defense testimony on my behalf. Wow. Yes, uh, dude. There was so much yeah. wrong with that thing. You got you got hooked up at the, at a bad time to be hooked up as a white dude. Yeah, I mean it. It they, in, in my experience, as long as you're not affiliated, it's no big deal. Stay in your own I'm, lane. I'm talking about the 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 federal government system like the states and everything seem to have a distinct hard on for locking up white guys for some reason here the past two or three years they just they really want to do it yeah well you know um here in green county our prosecutor <clears throat> he likes to run on a republican ticket because we live in a red state and you know conservatives like to be hard on crime and they love them some police officers and all of that mess, but the fact is, is he is vehemently anti Second Amendment. He wants to disarm everyone, but he'll do it one person at a time in his county. Right, fuckers. Well, if you want to see a good man go bad, all you got to do is talk him into joining politics. Mm. Yeah, you know, I got this saying. You know, in the uh, the judge that uh, was on my DWI case from the motorcycle accident. He got his butt hurt because that morning I dropped a video calling him historically a bully. That's why he revoked my bond. He was the Green County prosecutor before he was a judge. The prosecutor now was his number two. The judge on my gun case was an APA in this county for almost 20 years before he was a judge. If they're not playing patty cake, they're sucking each other off, I'm telling you. No two ways about it. <laughs> yeah.
Constitution doesn't mean anything anymore. Not, Not much. It, it means it, it has an effect in appeals. It has an effect in and the the whole appeals process that is right. the weak link we currently have to work with because if you go to court and you go to court on the wrong charges with the wrong skin tone and the wrong political beliefs your ass is fucking fried no doubt no doubt at all god forbid you do it in a county of more than 70,000 people and don't uh, we're right. about 185 Springfield is the queen city in Missouri. It's third largest city. Uh, I thought you may had a lot of transvestites. <laughs> I'm not worried about that. You know who I love? <laughs> I make no bones about it. <laughs> yeah, don't lie. You get at least one bone about it. I don't make no me. bones about it. That is smart <laughs> ass. Guy, smart ass. You love her. You need one bone on it. <laughs> Well, if, if, you know, fact is if absence makes the heart grow fond, it just made me fall further in love. Oh yeah. I know. He's talking about me. Y'all he's in love with me. <laughs> too much beard. I know, bro. <laughs> no, I do love you, but <laughs> dot, 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 dot. dot, dot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so my next bit that I've got up for us, the ne next bit of uh, 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 stuff to look at. Have you ever heard of the history guy? No. Yes. Right. But I've been out of the loop for 14 months, too, so I'm doing some catching up. Right. Well, the history guy does, like... Anthropology? Like, no, well, it's more Paleontologist? A, dude. Is he a paleontologist? <laughs> 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 Among other things. <laughs> Good God, y'all are just it's like it's like herding cats, y'all. <laughs> it's like herding cats. What's but hilarious is every time one of us interjects, your brain just shuts down for a second. It's it like, does. I've got this all planned out. Don't speak. <laughs> no, y'all go it's, ahead. It's like a it's like dealing with a big bunch of drunk seven year olds. Dude, I would be happy to see a seven-year-old in here. It, it it would be so much easier just to tell them to sit down and shut up. You, know, you invited us. <laughs> you haven't met mine. Right. <laughs> Teach them the first couple of years how to walk and talk and the rest of the 18 years to tell them to sit down and shut up. Right. Amen. We've got some layering issues happening over here. Oh, no. Don't well, I turn my... I turned my YouTube off in the background and I'm not hearing an echo of any kind anymore. Amateur, you fucking amateur. You ruin everything. Under no I know. circumstance should you put any of these images of, on top of that random ass video game playing in the largest up on the <laughs> screen. You're right. I'm not going to. That thing gets more views than y'all do. That's not my fault. Hey, you're a smart fella. That's what they tell me. That's a lie. Do you know, do you know <laughs> of an app? Do you know of an app that I can take a photograph and turn it into clip art? Hey man, does anybody know that? I've been looking for one of those for a while. So I'm about to start building some swag. I'm, I'm you not, can do I'm that not. with Adobe Illustrator, but it's a little more complicated than just pressing a button. You have to convert it from a JPEG right. into a into a vector file. When you get it into a vector file, that's okay. a single line. That's not pixels. Then you can turn it into clip art. Okay. Okay. <laughs> if you would send him my email address so he can give me the directions, that would be awesome. Because I've already forgotten. Something yeah. about vector... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got you. I got you, bro. I'll hook a brother up after yeah, this. Send show. me his email address. I'll pop off something to him. I bet you will. <laughs> I don't care where you pop off as long as you clean it up. Right. Just wipe it down and not in the beard. <laughs> right. Not in the beard. <laughs> that shit is hard to get out. 
Uh, Melissa tells me it's a complete and total abomination. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious what she's saying down in the chat. Who? Melissa Stedman. Oh, she left. Oh, did she leave? Yeah. Yeah, you set her off and she ran away. We have a new uh, participation trophy here, Mr. <laughs> Poop. Yes, because poop is funny, apparently. It's a humorous thing. Wow. I hit the wrong button. Yeah, that happens sometimes, bro. <laughs> Welcome to my flavor of brain injury. Right? Mine's special. All right, so these are weird laws from history. And this dude, this old dude here with the bow tie and the very effectual manner of speaking is going to tell us about it. How do you feel about that? Cool. Late at night on November 25th, 1870, two bedraggled looking men clutching a leather sack knocked on the office door of San Francisco businessman George Roberts. They explained to him that they had arrived in the city too late to put their parcel into the Bank of California and asked him if he would be willing to put their bag in his safe for the night. Well, of course, that made Mr. Roberts wonder what was in the bag. The two men were tight-lipped, but George Roberts was a clever businessman, and he was able to wheedle some information out of them on the solemn promise that he would tell nobody else. Well, if the two men hoped that George Roberts would keep their secret, they would be sorely disappointed. He was apparently contacting friends almost the instant they left his office, because what was in the bag was simply too good a business opportunity for a man like George Roberts to ignore. The bag was filled with uncut gems, rubies, emeralds, sapphires, and lots and lots of diamonds. And the discovery of what was quite apparently the richest gem field in the Americas is a story that deserves to be remembered. Philip Arnold hailed from Elizabethtown, Kentucky. He was poorly educated. He had been an apprentice to become a hatter when he decided to enlist in the army to serve in the war against Mexico in 1845. After the war, he'd become one of the hundreds of thousands of 49ers who had come to California to strike it rich during the gold rush. He'd worked in mining operations throughout the West, making enough money to buy a farm and start a family in his native Kentucky, although he continued to work in the West and only returned home periodically. In 1870, Arnold left his job working for a company that manufactured drill bits for mining and went to partner with his cousin, a man named John Slack, who was also a veteran of the Mexican War and also a 49er. And the two of them had worked together at a silver mine in New Mexico. And they went out to seek their fortune in diamonds. And by November of that year, the two prospectors had managed to fill a bag with uncut diamonds. And George Roberts, the man upon whose door they had knocked, wanted a piece of the action. One of the first people that Roberts contacted was William Chapman Ralston, one of the richest men in San Francisco and the founder of the Bank of California. And Ralston contacted a colorful mining financier named Asbury Harpending, who had been involved in mining in the West, to manage the project. Before they knew it, the two backcountry prospectors had... All right, ladies and gentlemen, with 48 votes, the decision is no hybrid sheeps. None of that. 66%. And a 33% split. Well, what are they going to do with all the pillows? I have no idea about the pillows. You keep bringing up the pillows. I feel like there's a subconscious draw to you and me and pillows. And I don't like it. Mm. Well, one thing's for sure. This man is no paleontologist. I haven't even got that set up for Vernon. But I can make it happen, Captain. Hold on. You know about cars? Yes. I'm a paleontologist. Oh, it's okay. There's dynamite in this bag, too. I am a paleontologist. I'm a paleontologist. Paleontologists study really old stuff like crackers because bad movies are funny I, I really should incorporate that a little better <laughs> because i'm bad at this
and some of the richest people in San Francisco asking to be their partners. Heartbending said of them they had all the manner of a couple of simple-minded fellows who had stumbled upon something great and bewildered by their good fortune were simply afraid to trust anyone with their momentous secret. But the promise of more money than they could ever imagine was too much to pass up, and they sold 50% of their stake. They were given an advance of $50,000, roughly the equivalent of $900,000 today, and told to go back to the mine and bring back more gems as proof of its value. They returned in the summer of 1871 with a burlap bag brimming with gemstones. Harpending took the bag to a meeting of the investors, dumping them on the table in what he described as a dazzling many-colored cataract of light. They sent 10% of the jewels to New York to be appraised by the most knowledgeable jeweler in America, Charles Louis Tiffany, the world-famous founder of Tiffany & Company. According to Harpending, Tiffany's assessment was, gentlemen, these are beyond question precious stones of enormous value. Eventually, he estimated the value of the gems, just 10% of those that Arnold and Slack had brought back that summer at $150,000, making the whole bag worth a staggering $1.5 million. The group then rec recruited more investors, notably George B. McClellan, who had been commander of the Army of the Potomac during the Civil War and had once run for president, and Benjamin Franklin Butler, who had been a major general during the Civil War and was now a congressman who would be helpful, the investors considered, in securing the land if the gem field turned out to be on federal property. Now more than ever, the wealthy group of investors wanted to buy out the two Kentucky miners who had discovered the gems. They gave them another $150,000 on the promise that they would bring a bona fide mining inspector to inspect the claim. Harpending engaged Henry Jannon, of whom he said, as a great mine expert and consulting engineer, he was without peer in the United States, perhaps in the world. In June of 1872, Jannon and Harpending traveled with Arnold and Slack by train from St. Louis to the tiny town of Rawlins, Wyoming. There, they had a grueling four-day trek to the site. What they found there amazed them. They found a high mountain mesa where diamonds could literally be discovered merely by kicking the dirt. Oh, yeah. Taking the dirt and... Just well, that's got to be worth at least $57. <laughs> <laughs> Hundred million, maybe, maybe. Uh, oh wow! Could you imagine it? You got this big bad plan. You're going to go west to start digging up gold and become rich, and you keep finding these damn rocks. That's crazy. Wild. Harpending said, for more than an hour, diamonds were being found in profusion, together with occasional rubies, emeralds, and sapphires. Janin assured me that the discovery location alone, which we had partially examined, was certainly worth many million dollars. The investors quickly bought out Arnold and Slack. They received another $150,000 and then sold out some $300,000 in stock. Their total take was some $650,000, nearly $12 million in 2018 dollars. That was a tidy sum, but nothing compared to the value of the gem field. The wily bankers had taken the claim from the miners who found it for a steal. As Harpender noted, thus the decks were cleared. But even they did not have a real appreciation of the value of their claim. That actually occurred by coincidence. Jenin happened to run into a team of government geologists, including Clarence King, on the train from Oakland. King was a Yale trained geologist who was in charge of an immense federal mapping project called the 40th Parallel Survey. They decided to visit the site in October of 1872. They too were amazed as raw gemstones were easily found laying about. They were able to survey more thoroughly and even dug a 10 foot deep trench where the greatest diamond deposit should be. What they found astounded them. They rushed back to San Francisco to tell the new owners of their discovery. On November 11th, 1872, they told the startled investors the amazing news they had about their famous gem claim. It was utterly worthless. The gems had been scattered about, salted in order to fool investors. Some of the wealthiest men in America had been taken to the cleaners by a couple of backcountry rubes. Philip Arnold might not have had a lot of education, but he was no dummy. He hadn't stumbled upon George Roberts' business by mistake. Yes. Um, <coughs> Mr. Country Boy Archaeology, on the top, what we have is Samuel the Infamous Gaming, because I was lazy and didn't do the gaming myself but he does a pretty good job at some god of war said i could use it so i'm using it in the middle we have the history guy who's talking to us about some very some supposedly weird laws that were broken uh weird crimes that were perpetrated i'm thinking this dude's got a bunch of glass out there 
and that the guy in New York was in on it. And this is something of a long con, right? Love he knew exactly who George Roberts was and exactly to whom he was connected. And he knew the best way to get George Roberts to sink the hook on their con was to get him to solemnly promise not to tell anybody else. They'd gotten the diamonds to bait the con from Arnold's former employer. He worked for a company that made drill bits, diamond drill bits. Diamond drills used chips of low quality industrial grade diamonds and he had stolen the raw diamonds from there. He and his cousin had then added raw gems, opals, emeralds, rubies, and sapphires they had bought from Native Americans when they had been miners in New Mexico. When they got that first $50,000 advance, they hadn't gone back to the mine to mine diamonds. They'd hopped a ship for London and under assumed names, bought thousands of low quality uncut diamonds on the market for just $20,000. And then Charles Tiffany valued just a tenth of those at being worth over $150,000. They used some of their next advance to purchase more stones to sell about a half acre of ground in far northeastern Colorado, near a low mountain still called Diamond Peak, and those had fooled their investors. But how did they do it? How had they fooled a respected mining engineer and the most knowledgeable jeweler on the continent? It turns out Charles Tiffany and his lapidary actually had almost no experience with uncut stones. The stones were almost exclusively cut in Europe and had appraised them as if they were far higher quality than they really were. And Henry Jannon, assured by Tiffany's valuation, didn't even consider fraud. In addition, the mine engineer had been promised an option to buy a thousand shares of company stock, shares that would have been worthless had the find been fake. The thought does not seem to have even crossed his mind. All the experts' confidence reinforced each other. Philip Arnold moved back to Kentucky, where he bought 500 acres of land that he put in his wife's name. The two were indicted for fraud by a grand jury, but the investors were too embarrassed to pursue criminal charges. Arnold denied that he had salted the claim, but he did end up settling with one of the investors for $150,000. But that means he still came out far ahead on the deal. He died of pneumonia in 1878. John Slack seemed to disappear, but a 1967 book on the Great Diamond Hoax asserted that he became an undertaker and died in New Mexico in 1896. Well, that's unproven, but if it's true, it raises an interesting question, because the man who died in 1896 only left his family about $1,000, and that means what happened to the rest of the money that he made in the Great Diamond Scan. To under right, no, uh, Belt Loop has really good observation here. If you came across a claim that was worth hundreds of millions of dollars, and in the course of just a few weeks, you could mine a million dollars out of it, why would you sell it? How much would be worth perpetual wealth? I got some oceanfront property in Arizona. Right? It just doesn't seem like something that anyone would do. Now do it. All right, Jenica. It's good to see you. Appreciate you coming by. Hi, Jenica. I love your name. Yeah, she's an alien. And why this could happen so easily, you do have to understand the period. These investors had made millions of dollars on the California gold rush. They had great faith that the mineral values of the Western United States could bring untold wealth. They had seen it happen. It was all too easy to believe. Far too easy, it seems, because emeralds, sapphires, and rubies had nowhere else in the world been found alongside diamonds. According to Harpender, that fact ought to have made a goat do some responsible thinking. Of course, the hero of the story is Clarence King, the Yale-trained government geologist. He became famous for his role uncovering the Great Diamond Hoax and was one of the great geologists in American history. His survey mapped an extensive part of the West between the Rocky Mountains and the Sierras. He authored several famous books, and three mountains are named after him. In 1879, when Congress consolidated all the national surveys and created the United States Geological Survey, he was named as its first director. He died of tuberculosis in 1901 at the age of 59. It's hard to figure out what lesson to take from the great diamond hoax of 1872. There is some delicious irony in two Kentucky rubes fooling some of the most prominent men of the day, but crime pays is never a good lesson to take. Maybe the best lesson is that science wins in the end. In any case, it is a ripping yarn, history, that deserves to be remembered. The Great Diamond Hoax. Well, the the problem seems obvious. <laughs> oh, Belt Loop. Oh, my yeah, God. Right? 
bunch of hookers and some cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody like, go, go, snow, bro. <laughs> What's the problem, dude? You know what they needed? A bunch of hookers and some cocaine? Paleontologist. Oh, yeah. That's, that's <laughs> tough. That would do it. You ever heard of the racketeer nickel? It's none of your business, and I'd appreciate it if you'd stay out of my affairs. <laughs> the nickel. Since 1938, the front has borne an image of Thomas Jefferson, third president of the United States. The reverse usually shows a picture of his home, Monticello, although there were special editions minted in 2004 and Good 2005 night, to commemorate the 200th out. anniversary of the Louisiana Purchase and the Lewis and Clark expedition. In a, in a world where we barely use change anymore at all, nickels don't seem to gain a lot of attention, but that wasn't always the case. In 1883, a new nickel design was minted that gave the United States Mint great consternation and led to fraud all over the country. And one of the most famous fraudsters of the 1883 racketeer nickel was said to be both deaf and mute, which essentially helped him to perpetrate his fraud. It is history that deserves to be remembered. Counterfeiting is nearly as old as coinage. Around 600 BC, ancient Lydians minted coins out of electrum, a naturally occurring gold and silver alloy believed to be among the oldest coins ever minted. Greek historian Herodotus credits them as the first people to use gold and silver coins, although historically that is a matter of debate. Even these ancient coins seem to have been counterfeited as versions with base metal cores plated with electrum, gold, or silver have been found. In the early modern period, coins were often clipped or shaved for the precious metal, which was always of value. Coins were given reeded edges specifically to prevent people from passing off shaved coins. The first American coins with reeded edges were struck in the 1790s on half dimes. They weren't yet known as a nickel, as well as on larger coins. But a good counterfeiter or fraudster was always on the lookout for an opportunity. From the 1790s, American coins were minted in a variety of denominations, including the half cent, two cent, and three cent pieces, up to the gold $2.50 quarter eagle, the $5 half eagle, and the $10 eagle coins. Most of these coins were made of varying amounts of precious metal, usually gold or silver, with lower denominations made of copper. Half dimes, valued at five cents, were originally silver, which changed in the 1860s thanks to lobbying efforts by Joseph Wharton, who had a near monopoly on nickel production in the United States. He successfully lobbied for the three cent piece and the five cent piece to be made with copper nickel, leading to the James Longacre designed shield nickels. Shield nickels were only legal tender up to $1 initially, and that combined with a widely criticized design led to numerous suggestions for change. So at this point, this is where I asked the peanut gallery over here. What do you reckon a racketeer nickel does? Well, apparently it gives them consternation. They need some Pepto-Bismol. Right. <laughs> what? You're, I can't take you anywhere, dude. <laughs> I mean, the last time we were in public together, you embarrassed me. And, and this you, is me we're talking about. <laughs> I know. I was just about to say that. What? Caucasian embarrassed? No. Good gracious. Those people knew me. <laughs> well, you know. I do. <laughs> The American Journal of Numismatics even described the shield nickel as the ugliest of all known coins. The shield nickel is also what would eventually lead to the term nickel to describe a five cent piece. It's not actually the first coin to include nickel. In 1857, the mint had shifted penny production to an alloy of 88% copper and 12% nickel. These nickel pennies were the first coins to be called nickels in the United States, differentiating them from the most coinage made of gold or silver. Besides Wharton's lobbying, there were other good reasons by 1866 to make coins out of base metals. During the Civil War, commerce slowed dramatically, in large part because Americans began hoarding gold and silver coins, which would hold value regardless of inflation. This caused both the Union and the Confederacy to issue paper money in cent denominations. Some banks even printed their own paper money so that commerce could continue. The issue of scarcity and hoarding continued after the Civil War. The Mint simply could not keep up with demand for coinage. Thus, in 1866, the Mint began producing three and five cent pieces made of 25% nickel and 75% hey, copper. You have a request from a fan. <laughs> Just saying. Are we going to get to see her feet? Well, if he donates to her channel, I don't see why not. 
It's just a foot. I got her elbow for free. Right? <laughs> that was, that, okay, you're right. You did. Yeah. Hopper. However, the nickel was not the only five cent piece to be minted during this time. Silver half dimes continued to be minted until 1873. Both the five cent piece and the three cent piece could be called nickels after that, as they were the only coins made from the material. In the years immediately after the Civil War, these coins were minted in huge numbers, nearly 15 million in 1866 and over 30 million in 1867. So many of the coins were minted that by the late 1870s, the glut of coinage forced the mint to cease minting five cent nickels completely. None were minted for circulation in 1877 or 1878, and fewer than 70,000 were minted in 1879, 80, and 81. Wharton, seeking to sell more of his nickel to the government, began lobbying for more coins to be made out of nickel. Wharton hoped to convince the mint to shift pennies to copper nickel as they were being minted in much larger numbers. By 1881, his consistent lobbying led Mint Superintendent Archibald Loudon Snowden to order new designs for the one, three, and five cent pieces. Hold up. Do you hear that name? Warden? One, his consistent lobbying led Mint Superintendent Archibald Loudon Snowden to order... Archibald Loudon Snowden. That is a hell of a moniker, bro. Can you imagine being in middle school with that thing? 100 bucks says he went by Archie. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. New designs for the one, three, and five cent pieces from the mints engraver, Charles Barber. Barber was given very specific instructions on his designs. The obverse, the head side, was to have a classic Liberty head, while the reverse was to feature a wreath around a Roman numeral denoting the value V for the five cent piece. The nickel was also to be slightly larger than the shield nickel. The smaller denomination coins were meant to be identical except for size and the Roman numerals on the reverse. But early in the design process, development of the penny and the three cent piece were abandoned and only a new nickel design was produced. A large number of pattern coins, coins that were not released but used to evaluate the design, which was modified slightly before being approved and sent to the treasury secretary. The initial design was actually rejected as the words United States of America appeared on the head side of the coin and coinage statutes actually required it to be on the reverse. While other issues have been considered, one thing the coin did not have when it was approved was the word sense. The mint could be excused for a mitigate. Early silver and copper nickel designs and three cent pieces didn't say cents and had circulated for years without complaint. The coin was meant to start minting in 1883, but the dies for striking the coins weren't ready in time. And so throughout January, the Philadelphia mint struck nearly a million and a half 1883 shield nickels. The new design was finally released in February and almost immediately others noticed that the coins were Problematic. On February 11th, the New York Times published a press release from Washington, D.C. that stated, Chief Brooks of the Secret Service says that he regards the new nickels as very dangerous coins. A thin plating would enable persons to pass them off as gold coins of a new issue. The problem arose from the new nickels' similarity to the $5 gold half-eagle coin. Both bore a Liberty Head design on the front and were nearly the same size, 21.21 millimeters for the nickel and 21.6 millimeters for the half-eagle. The reverse of the half eagle was an eagle behind a shield, but a gold-plated nickel was nearly the same weight and size, and if only glanced at, could easily be passed off at a hundred times its value. And there were enough clever people to take advantage. The most famous story of fraud using gold-plated nickels is that of Josh Tatum, a deaf mute purportedly from Boston. Depending on the source, Tatum was said to have collected a good number of the new nickels before enlisting someone, usually a pawn shop owner who may have been an amateur jeweler, to plate the change. The Palladium Item newspaper of Richmond, Indiana, relates that carrying the thousand plated nickels in a small black bag and looking respectable with a mustache and balding head, he would enter a tobacco store, place the coin on the counter, and point to a five-cent cigar. The clerk would grab the cigar and hand it and $4.95 in change back. Tatum would then move on to the next door. He eventually had more plated, making his way from Boston. That is fucking genius, dude. You know, if you had 10 three-cent pieces, you'd only have 30 cents. Right. That's why we don't have three cent pieces. It's yep. stupid. Noted. Walk in with a nickel and walk out with four ninety four fifty. It's changed. You know, in, in the ancient days, they used to take, they'd make coins, they'd mint them out of gold or silver or something like that. But people would bite a little tiny piece off the edge. So it'd still be a whole coin, 
but it's a little flat spot. But if you did that enough times, you could make more coins out of the little nibs that they'd bite yeah. off the edge. First uh, counter counterfeiting ever. Right. To New York and hitting every shop that sold a cigar. By some claims, he was able to make $15,000 on the scheme before someone caught up to him and he was arrested. But there was an issue. When he was taken to court by the store owners he had cheated, they couldn't convict him. When each witness who had been cheated out of $4.95 was asked if Tatum had ever asked for change, each witness had to say no. The man was mute. By asking for only a five cent cigar, Tatum could claim that he never misrepresented the coin. It was the seller's mistake giving him change. A coin collector explained to the Fort Worth Star Telegram the shop owners were simply out of luck. That is absolutely diabolical. That, <laughs> that is fucking brilliant, bro. Wow. Yeah, blame it on the shop owner. Right? Right, but he's deaf and mute. He couldn't even tell him that he'd made a mistake, so he just took the money. How is it physically impossible to print trillions of dollars, Stephen Tracy? If you got enough paper, you can print enough dollars. They don't mean they're worth anything. It also takes time. It's another factor there. And then by the time you print out the trillions of dollars, how many of the original dollars that were printed are no longer useful? They have to be destroyed. So you have to replace some of the original, you know, you know what I'm saying? Well, the truth is, is that dollars are magic Babylonian squares in the first place. We went off the gold standard back in Nixon's time. Money is propped up by oil now, not gold. There is no gold in Fort Knox. All right. Makes me wonder what is over there, there. But thanks to carelessness, it's been claimed that this act is the source of the phrase, just joshing you, to mean usually a harmless joke or prank. That's where that first came from. First report of gold-plated Liberty Nickels yep. appeared only 12 days after the coins were first issued. The new five-cent coins are so perfectly gold-washed as to deceive any ignorant persons and pass readily among them for new $5 gold pieces, reported another press release. The Baltimore Sun reported on the February 19th that a gold-plated five-cent piece of the new issue has reached the Sun office, and its resemblance to a $5 gold piece is quite enough to deceive. Four days later, the Charlotte Observer in North Carolina reported that the merchants who had seen the nickel give the authorities credit for their wisdom in stopping the coinage of the dangerous piece, but others were less understanding. The Intelligencer Journal of Lancaster, Pennsylvania printed, someone about the Philadelphia Mint has a mania for putting new faces on coins. And unfortunately, good judgment and good taste seldom attend the performance. Only two weeks after their introduction, there was already talk at the Mint and the Treasury Department about withdrawing the new coins from circulation. Treasury Secretary Charles Folger seems to have believed that unnecessary, but reports continue to proliferate that the coin was being used for fraud. Yeah, about Luke. Appreciate Secret Service agent Henry Finnegas arrested Tracy, a man for trying to too, pass buddy. off a gold nickel across the country in San Francisco. Finnegas also reported that several persons engaged in the gold and silver plating business in this city have called upon me to ascertain if they could gild the new five cent nickel without my interfering with them. Archibald Loudon Snowden, chief executor of the Mint, fought the change as well, arguing that no one had plated the three cent piece and passed it off for the quarter eagle. But it hardly mattered. By March, the decision had been made to alter the design to include cents on the reverse. Though the York Dispatch of York, Pennsylvania reported that minting of the no cents nickel continued, with nearly $5,000 being minted in Philadelphia every day. Papers across the country reported, however, that the no cents coins would be collected by the mint to be destroyed. The new design finally began minting on June 26, but only after 5,479,519 no cents coins had been minted. Because of the reports that the coin would be recalled, many of those 5 million were hoarded by collectors who believed the coin would be valuable. Ironically, because so many of them were saved, high-quality no-sense nickels are relatively common, while high-quality cents nickels are considerably more rare. It might disappoint you to find out that the famous story of Josh Tatum is likely nothing more than legend. The coin was certainly plated and likely used in schemes similar to the one attributed to Tatum, but he doesn't appear as any of the men arrested across the country for the scheme. More importantly, his story doesn't appear in any contemporary newspaper account. The story seems to have proliferated in 1965 when it appeared in multiple papers on articles about coin shows. But possibly the earliest version appears in the Southwest Times of Pulaski, Virginia on December 14th, 1958, told by a Miss Willie Long, 
It isn't clear where she heard the story. Even more disappointing, the story is definitely not the origin of the phrase, just joshing you. In fact, the phrase's origin is uncertain, but Merriam-Webster dates its origin to at least 1845, well before Tatum's supposed exploits. The phrase has also been suggested to come from humorous Josh Billings, the pen name of Henry Wheeler Shaw, whose career began in 1858. The origin of the phrase is, unfortunately, simply unknown. While the story of Josh Tatum might be purely legend, the fraud surrounding the controversial no sense nickel was very real. And since. All right. That was pretty cool. Uh, let's see. We're going to do some of this stuff here. All right. So we got about five minutes to kill before I drop YouTube. And uh, we're going to. I'm going to. I, I, I am going to. I, I. You on Rumble and X for a little while after that. Not sure how long exactly, uh, but I've got some, um, check this out. I don't know if you've seen this. Have you ever heard of a uh, Viva La Dirt Lady? Heard what? Viva La Dirt Lady. No. Okay, so these are some uh, creators that make game-related content, right? What they do is they take circumstances that you know, if you were in the real world would happen and apply them to game logic, right? So NPCs that are escorting people through the forest or whatever, you know, on like a or escort mission, suppose you turn on the kid, like kid friendly version of the game and let your kids play. And the kids are just running around casting sleep spells and, and what they call balloon pops, which are blowing people up. And the NPC sees it, in the normal framework of a real world, whereas the kids just see a bunch of like glitter and tinsel pop out. Interesting. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Eva La Dirt League. It is a channel on YouTube. You're welcome to go check it out. Hello, Mama Pets. Welcome. Good to see you. And uh, we're going to go check out. They, they've done a whole bunch of these. This one in specific is a compilation of uh, a particular NPC. Uh, he's the shopkeep. His name is Greg. And he hangs out right in front of his shop on every single RPG game you've ever played on a computer or any type of console, which I know, Jake, you don't play games. Me you a recess, I you fuck a laughing joke, but he don't play. Hey, I'm down with like if you got an Atari, let's go. I like I Zelda. <laughs> Final Here's Fantasy. Mike Tyson Punch Out. Well, this this <laughs> kind of checks Mario. out. This kind of checks out in the Final Fantasy genre. You remember that shop you go to, and there's that dude standing. All yeah, right. I yeah, it's it's just a, a it's the funny. shop guy. Yes, the shop guy. And and imagine if if he sees real life things in anyway, it's a dumb premise, but it's hilarious. I the shop it. guy who never has the sword that I'm looking for, unless he's got the sword that I'm looking for, but I've only got 20 hit points and he needs 30 hit points to buy the sword. So he <laughs> won't give it to me. I hate that guy. I hate that guy too. You know what bothers me most though? is when you go to the shop right before you go into the big, deep, dark cave that nobody's ever returned from, and when you come out of the cave on the other side, he's just standing there selling better shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, like you needed while you were in the cave. Right? That, that light, that goddamn candle of ever burning would have been really fucking handling that, handy in that dark asshole. Damn it. Damn it. I, I, Damn How it. do you go about transferring from one platform to another? I still haven't solidified this. I don't know. I just upload to each one. It takes like an hour and a half. Oh, it's screw ridiculous. that shit. What I do is I go in and set everything up in StreamYard so it'll go to all the different locations. And then I have to go into um, Rumble and set that one up and then go back into StreamYard and connect it to that live stream mm -hmm. that I just created on Rumble. It works. It's a little bit of a pain in the ass, but it takes like 10 minutes. Yeah, I don't use StreamYards, so I've got to uh, figure out another way to do that. Uh, if you've got the ability to stream to multiple destinations. 
Well, the thing is with my setup is it it relies on internet speed. So yeah. I can probably get it out to two, but every time I add one to it, my uh, quality goes down. Right. It affects your bandwidth directly. Yeah. I wish there was a way that I could send out one show to one website and they would propagate it to everybody else. And I know there's a way you can do it with RSS, but I hadn't quite figured that out yet. Right, right. Great, dude. I, I'll tell you what you do. Uh, you're going to you're gonna talk out YouTube, and then I'm going to play something resembling a, uh exit strategy. Okay. So do your thing. Hey, thanks for joining Caucasian Sasquatch and uh, whatever the name of this show is. I'm pretty sure it's not blast radius. Anyway, I'm Jake Johnson, and I've had a great time tonight getting to know you guys, and I appreciate you having me. We'll see you next time right here on YouTube. Follow Un Untethered Live on YouTube and follow Caucasian Sasquatch and follow Ajot and everybody in chat. Follow everybody else, and that way we'll all be happy. Excellent. Three, two, one. And here we go. On my own, here we go. If you're looking for the guilty, you need only look into a mirror. The communists declared that the real differences among our people constituted the weakest and most vulnerable point in our social fabric. It's MAGA country! This is no hoax, ladies and gentlemen. I urge you to run for your lives while you can. We're not making this up just so we can take over the world. <laughs> the old dinosaur media isn't dying, it's dead. We are the new media. This is our world now. Lay down and die. Peace was never an option. So if we don't step up and win this culture war, then who the fuck will? Let's wake the fuck up! <clears throat> We're gonna get naked. No. Nope. I'm locked in here with you. <laughs> You're locked in here with me. That's what you've been waiting for. Be the one we need. Do not come. I'm gonna come. <laughs> <laughs> Global industrial complex. Yep. 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 Uniparty. Do I really look like a guy with a plan?